Welcome to the Multi-Orgasmic Mama podcast, where sexual taboos are broken. I'm Tilly Storm, holistic sex coach and jade egg and tantric sex teacher. I work with luxury lovers, teaching them the art of better sacred sex by helping them remove all their blocks to pleasure, turn on confidence and connection so they can step into their fullest potential and power as humans and alchemists in the 3D. If you'd like to learn how to release shame and guilt destroying your sex life so you can feel fully sexually liberated and free, you can access my How to Release Shame and Guilt training at www.tillystorm.com forward slash shame. This episode is brought to you by the Essentially Embodied Woman Collective. If you're ready to remove all your blocks to pleasure, turn on and feeling confident and sexy in your body through my paid programs and offerings, then head to www.tillystorm.com today. Hey there, my luxury lovers. Welcome back to the podcast. It's Tilly here. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing a series on questions, inquiries that I often hear from people. The first one is on I can only orgasm in one way. What should I do? Oh man, this is a biggie. This is one that actually got me into sexuality work in the first place. I was 27 years old. I was married at the time and my partner made some comment that really shook me up, shook me to the core. It made me start questioning my confidence in the bedroom. And After I started diving in and learning a little bit more about what I might be able to do for myself, that's when I came across a book on female ejaculation on Amazon. I have no idea how I came across this book or how I found it, but that was my first deep dive into questioning my sexuality. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I am only able to orgasm in one way. That feels a little limiting. And I can't imagine spending the next several decades of my life only being able to experience this little bit of heaven. Like it just felt so limited. And I had that inkling, that inner knowing like, well, there's got to be more. There has to be more. And I just followed that little intuitive hit until it led me down the rabbit hole of becoming a jade egg and a tantra teacher and a holistic sex coach. So here we are many, many years later. All right. Yep. The first step to being able to orgasm in different ways is to go on an orgasm detox for 30 days. This doesn't mean that you can't have an orgasm. It just means that you got to stop having an orgasm in the way that you always do. Yes, my love, super frustrating. I know I've been there. I remember being super frustrated with my body, but the thing is, is that you have to give your body an opportunity to create a new path and to learn a new way to orgasm. And this orgasm detox for 30 days is absolutely the best way to break out of the only, you know, only being able to orgasm in one way. So that doesn't mean that you can have an orgasm for 30 days. It just means that for 30 days, you're not going to do it in the way that you always have. And you know what? It only took me like two or three weeks actually to stop doing it in the way that did work. And I would, I got so like turned on and crazy and horny that eventually my body was like, oh, right. doesn't matter. We don't have to do it in that way. (laughs) So for 30 days, you're either going to self-pleasure or have sex with your partner or just alternate between the two. It really just depends on whether you have a partner or not. And when you self-pleasure or have sex, you are not going to let yourself have an orgasm in that way. And you don't have to self-pleasure or have sex every day, but I just want you to know that when you do, you're going to commit to not letting it happen in the same way it always has for these 30 days. This is going to give your body and your brain a time to train your nervous system to experience pleasure in new ways and to build up sensitivity again. So the second step to learning to orgasm in a different way is to identify the number one block in the way of you being able to orgasm in a different way. (laughs) Okay. This is sometimes, uh, seems like it should be obvious, but for a lot of people it is not. So this is the thing that you're always going to, that keeps you from experiencing different types of orgasms in various ways. So there are actually five blocks that I find pretty common. The first, rushing. 
are you too goal oriented in sex? I promise you 99% of you are way too goal oriented. You don't take your time. You don't properly warm your body up. The average couple has sex for seven minutes, but it takes women's bodies 30 to 45 minutes to fully open to their full pleasure capacity and potential. So if that says anything about rushing, well, I don't know what else will. So yes, sure, you have a go-to way to orgasm, but if you want to learn a new way, you've got to slow it way down and you have to learn to relax, which can be so difficult for our fast-paced society. The second big block to orgasming and different ways is being an overgiver and focusing too much on what your partner is experiencing and not focusing on pleasure sensations in your body, which if you want great sex, then you should be focusing on pleasure sensations in your body and not being in your head about it. So being in your head about what your partner is experiencing, it makes it difficult or impossible to connect with pleasure and feel pleasure expand in your body in new ways because you're too focused on being the giver and not the receiver of pleasure. Mm. Okay, the third way, the third biggest block, being a performer. Mm, Trying to look like everyone you have seen in porn or worrying about what you look like. Mm, This is a surefire way to never learn to orgasm in new ways because you think it can only happen in a certain way that's not even real whatsoever at all. So this is because pleasure comes from within the body, not from external validation. If you are looking for external validation, and that you are hot and sexy, then you're likely performing in sex. And the only way to get past that is to give yourself the validation you're seeking and to stop performing so you can tune into your body's own pleasure and get out of your head about it. Okay, the fourth big block, I see this one a lot, using your go-to fantasy as a crutch. Fantasizing or being stuck in a particular fantasy, it can block you from learning to orgasm in a new way because the only way you have learned to do it is to use that fantasy. So if you're always going to something in your head instead of tuning into your body, you are using your brain as a super highway to orgasm, which as you know, works really freaking well, right? But eventually you want to carve out a new super highway. So you are not dependent on the fantasy and can learn to orgasm in a different way. The fifth block is being desensitized. This is for you, those of you who have vibrator addiction or you know, maybe if you're a dude, um, most, I wouldn't say most, but well, actually probably most, but a lot of men tend to, um, self-pleasure in a way that's really like way too hard and too fast and it makes them desensitized. So being addicted to using a vibrator or simply overusing it can cause you to become desensitized as well. I don't care what Cosmo article you have found that says that that's not true. Girl, you know, it's true come on. (laughs) You know, it's true. You know, it desensitizes you. It, you know, I don't know if they're getting paid by vibrator companies to tell them that, that that's not true, but you know, it's true. And you know that when you use a vibrator habitually and consistently that it does desensitize you and it makes it to orgasm. It makes it harder to orgasm without it. Okay. So those were the five biggest blocks I see. I'll review those real quick. Rushing, being an overgiver, being a performer, um, using your go-to fantasy as a crutch, and being desensitized. Now, once you've identified your biggest block to having orgasms in different ways, I want you to commit to breaking through that block over the next 30 days in your orgasm detox. So for example, if your block is rushing things and going too fast and you're tensing up and contracting or forcing yourself and pushing yourself to an orgasm, you've got to commit to slowing things down, breathing deeply into your body and relaxing. Okay, and if you are desensitized from habitual vibrator use or, you know, if you're a guy and you've masturbated in a certain way that's really hard and fast, then that has probably desensitized you as well. So make a commitment to not use the vibrator or to masturbate in that hard and fast way for the next 30 days. And say your issue is being a performer or an overgiver, which is many of you listening to this podcast because... Well, I know I have my ways of knowing and worrying what everyone else thinks. 
All right. If that's you, then make a commitment to get out of your head and into your body and learn how to do it. I talk so much about this on the podcast, like so freaking much. Sometimes I feel like I am a record on repeat all the time around how to get out of your body or how to get out of your head and into your body. So really focusing on the present moment and the sensations that you're feeling in sex and self-pleasure instead of your to-do list or worrying what your partner is thinking. Okay. Now the third step in all of this is to make an intention. Intention is so powerful, yet we don't really utilize the power of intention in our day-to-day life. You can craft an intention around this by spending a couple of moments writing on the questions of why do I want to be able to orgasm in different ways in the first place? What is your big why? Why does this even matter to you? I know you have an idea, but when you write it out, you might be surprised what the answers are. Why is this a priority in your life right now? And once you've written that, then you can craft an intention statement that reflects your answer. So for example, it could be something like this. It is my intention to learn to orgasm in different ways so that I can experience more pleasure and adventure in my sex life and be more present in my body and feel more connected and receptive to my partner. Mm. Just stating that intention and holding that intention. You can do it on a full moon ritual or new moon ritual. Actually, (laughs) that's the time to do that. Um, So there's no right or wrong here. You just want to tune into what feels right to you and really dive into the bigger why, like, why does this actually matter to you on a deeper level and, you know, make the intention for that to happen. And hopefully it will inspire you and excite you to keep going when the going gets tough. Okay, the fourth and the final step to learning to orgasm in a different way is to start a conscious sexuality practice or training routine. I know those words aren't sexy, but you know, it's true. None of us have a training routine or sexuality practice until we've probably worked with the Dallas practices or learned Tantra. But you know, it's so important that you do. No one teaches you how to have great sex. So when are you going to learn? Uh, so what that means is either starting a jade egg practice if you're a woman, in which you can pick up my free how to start a jade egg practice e-guide at www.tillystorm.com, or just simply working with your sexual energy, tuning into your body and your pleasure sensations while dropping the goal and learning to feel the subtle sensations of pleasure when they do arise and then consciously expanding them when you do feel them. And I'm going to be honest with you, it takes a lot of focus and a lot of willpower to go from decades of masculine sexual conditioning, meaning being all about the orgasm and the end goal, to learning how to approach your body and sexuality in a more feminine way that lends itself to learning how to orgasm in different ways. You can approach your body with this goal-oriented, I'm going to 10x my orgasm. Oh my God, if you're in a female body and doing that, your body's going to shut down. Okay, don't do that. That is a surefire way to not ever get where you want to go because that's not how the female body works. Okay, so you've got to reverse that conditioning. There's no goal. There is no goal. There's no goal. All right, stop doing that. (laughs) If you want to learn how to orgasm in different ways, you've got to learn to drop that goal and to tap into what are you feeling right now? What do you feel in your body right now? Oh my gosh, maybe your body is just screaming at you so loud that you've just been telling her to shut up for so long that she finally did. And now you're dumb. Now you're numb and you're disconnected. Okay. How are you going to get that connection back? You're going to start listening. You're going to start listening. You might experience like a sense of sadness or remorse or grief for all the times that you didn't, but this is how you learn. Okay. So learning to work with your sexual energy and turn on instead of forcing or pushing your body to achieve a certain outcome, it might feel frustrating at first, but just know that it takes time. It takes a lot of time for your body to figure it out. Well, I mean, I take that back. It's not even a lot of time. It just takes allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to feel what you feel. And to stop trying, forcing, and pushing all the time. It's not a magic pill. That's why I told you to give it 30 days and see what happens. 
So just don't do what you've been doing for 30 days and your body will begin to figure it out if you start to tune into it and reconnect to it, my loves. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. I super hope this helps. And if you've enjoyed the podcast, please leave your five-star ratings and luscious reviews. So more people will discover this little slice of podcast heaven. See you all next week. Bye-bye.